Hello lovely people, today I wanted to run through some books that I have bought recently. Now you might think, Sophie, very recently you posted a book on haul where you were talking about the fact that because you were moving house you were trying to read down the shelves and get rid of any books that you didn't want to take to a new place with you. And you would be correct. What has happened is that I have moved, I have done another cull of the shelves, and yet, I've also continued to buy books. <laughs> so, I just thought I would run through them. Um, I'm very excited for a lot of these, that's why they're in my life. Usually I try and split this into sort of like, I go through like by genre, maybe, by like theme. Um, I'm kind of going to go through by when I got them, because there's lots of like little groupings that kind of work together. Um, starting with, I did an order from Queer Lit, which is one of my favourite independent bookshops. They are a queer bookshop up in Manchester. They're really great. I highly recommend them. Their packaging is beautiful. Everything comes wrapped in brightly coloured tissue paper with stickers, with bookmarks, with a little flyer. It's beautiful. I love it. I had a craving. I always have a craving for queer books. That's just a general state of being. But also specifically, like, I realised that most of my to-read books, I'm very interested in all of them, I didn't have a lot of like light books that if I just wanted to read something delightful, you know, um, a lot of them are like very, very interesting, but also like maybe a bit heavy. So I decided to go for sort of a hopefully lovely array of sweet queer books, starting with one that I have been highly anticipating, that is Hanny and Issues Guide to Fake Dating by Adiba Jagadar. I read The Henna Wars last year, must have been last year and loved it. I really like books that feel like the characters in them feel very authentically the age they're supposed to be. And with the Henna Wars, like I really felt that they were sort of this like younger side of YA kind of um, thing. And I just really, really enjoyed it. What I know about this one is Hanny comes out to her friends as bisexual, but they don't believe her because she's never dated a girl. So she lies and says that she's dating Issue. Issue wants to be head girl, but she, that's like a popularity game. So essentially the two of them start fake dating. And I'm just expecting this to be absolutely delightful and lovely. I already know that I like the author's writing style, so um, I'm just excited. I love the covers of these as well. I think they're really sweet. After that is No Big Deal by Bethany Rutter. I recently read um, Melt My Heart by Bethany Rutter over summer, and I loved it. I, again, really like books where they feel like authentically their age. And that was focused on, like, um, these two girls, essentially in that in-between summer between um, doing your A-levels, going off to university, and it had this gorgeous mix of like body positivity, because Bethany Rutter is a body positive activist, and um, everyone felt very authentically teenage, and it felt very, um, I just loved it. It was just really a gorgeous summer read, and I had a really nice time. So I thought I would pick up her other book. Emily has no problem with her body, but other people appear to have a problem with the fact that she's fat. She has a mum who's putting a lot of pressure on her, but she meets this guy called Joe, and then essentially I think it's like a romance, but also she's really having to prove to people that like her body is no big deal. Um, and again, one thing I liked about Melt My Heart was that um, the main character in that was very comfortable in her body. It was other people who had problems with her body. Um, and it made it very clear that that's not her problem. And whilst that can affect her sometimes, it's not anything she needs to change. And I loved that. And I'm hoping that this will just also deliver to me like all of the things that I loved about Melt My Heart, but in a different book, which is what we want really, isn't it? Um, continuing my theme of like bisexuality in books, I also picked up Perfect on Paper by Sophie Gonzalez. This feels like a very classic, like it could be a teen movie to me. Essentially, the main character, Darcy, um, she has secretly been running this um, this system whereby like people leave their problems in like a locker and she like answers them. And she's keeping it a secret because if her best friend finds out about something she said or did in this role, then she's going to have a real problem with her. But then this new boy finds out about it and he essentially like blackmails her into helping him get his girlfriend back, I think. And this feels very drives me crazy if anyone has seen the Melissa Joan Hart film, which I have a real soft spot for. Um, and again, I was just like, sweet, fluffy, queer romance, give it to me. I hope it's going to be really lovely. Um, the final one from my Queer Lit section is Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. I have been wanting to read a Melinda Lowe book for a long time. This is set in America in 1954 in Chinatown. It's a dangerous time for two girls to be in love. Um, the Red Scare is happening. One of these characters' parents faces deportation, and it's kind of like 
um, their struggle, their love story set in this time. I just think this sounds absolutely wonderful. I really am looking forward to reading this one and I have heard nothing but positive things about this. The next section is I went to the Book Barn's Kilo Sale, which I have mentioned before on this channel. Essentially the Book Barn is a barn full of books. It's great. Twice a year on the bank holidays they do Kilo Sales where you turn up, you grab a box, you fill a box full of the books that you want and you pay by weight instead of by number of books. So, um, I have picked up, frankly, some delightful looking books. I'll start with The First Ladies of Rome, The Women Behind the Season by Annalise Frasenbruch. This is about, as it may say, the women behind the seasons. So I read Dynasty by Tom Holland, and I don't really like Tom Holland as a person, but I did enjoy that book. It was all about, like, Julius Caesar, Augustus Caesar, all of these guys. Um, what I'm interested in about this is I do know stuff about some of the women who are sort of tangentially related to these men, like wives, mothers, cousins, sisters, that kind of thing. But I do really want to get to know some of them a lot better, and I'm really hoping that this will deliver to me. It has great quotes from like Bethany Hughes and Alison Weir on the back, both of whose work I also like, so I'm really hoping to like expand. When I did classical studies at uni, I definitely was more of a Greek than a Roman person, so I, f I always feel that my Roman knowledge is a bit inadequate, even though it's probably better than like your average person's. So I'm just looking forward to that, to be honest with you. I also bought this selection of delightful old books. They're a bit random, <laughs> so I'll start off with this one, which I have to be really careful with because the spine's falling apart. A Garland of Shakespeare's Flowers, which is by, um, compiled by Rose E. Carr Smith. It has coloured plates in it. It also has a pressed flower in it that is absolutely delightful. I don't know if you can see that. But it has essentially like coloured plates of flowers. And just what the flower is, and a quotation from the Shakespeare play that it is mentioned in, um, I like nature writing, I like Shakespeare. This just seemed, number one, like a beautiful book, and then also just like something that would just be also lovely to have as a reference point. Also, like maybe if you're a writer and you want to make references to Shakespeare, it could be quite helpful. Um, another nature one, <laughs> again, you pay by the kilo, you just pick up things that sound interesting. Welsh Ferns, a descriptive handbook by H.A. Hyde and A.E. Wade. It's published by the National Museum of Wales Press. Um, it's all about Welsh ferns, isn't it? I just, I really like ferns. Ferns are one of my favourite, like, plants, but I don't know a lot about them. So this is probably going to be quite academic and maybe not, like, the most easily accessible, but also I was just like, let's just give it a go. <laughs> um, this lovely little one is Poems and Translations by DJ Rossetti, which is Dante Gabriel Rossetti, who is my favourite pre raphaelite painter. Um, and I realised that I love his paintings, I love his artwork. I don't think I've actually read any of his poems properly. I have read Christina Rossetti, I have also read some stuff that his brother did, um, but I just thought, you love him, Sophie. Get this little compendium of his poems and his translations. I'm probably going to work my way through them quite slowly because I'm not the biggest poetry person, but I just wanted to try it. And then this one is by Philip Massinger. It's from the Mermaid series. I don't know how well you can see the mermaid on the cover. Um, I've never read any Philip Massinger before, but this is um, a selection of plays. So The Duke of Milan, A New Way to Pay Old Debts, The Great Duke of Florence, The Maid of Honour, The City Madam. I don't know how I'm going to feel about these plays. Again, not the biggest play person. I thought this edition was beautiful, and I, I like to get things sometimes to like challenge myself and move myself out of my comfort zone, so we'll see what it's like. The final one from the book barn I bought because I like the cover. <laughs> The Man in the Iron Mask by Alexandre Dumas. I really enjoyed The Count of Monte Cristo. It's one of my favourite classics. I haven't read any of the Three Musketeers series yet. I have the, this is the abridged version. I have the full version on my Kindle. What I thought I might do is read the full version on my Kindle um, and then later read this abridged version because I would like, I like to read things in full. I don't like to get like the shortened version. But I thought that this was a really lovely edition. <laughs> I just went for it. Moving on, I also got The End of Summer by Tilly Walden. I really love Tilly Walden's work. I specifically got this because um, Avery Hill Publishing is the press that has published a lot of Tilly, Tilly Walden's work. I really like them. They do really interesting things. Um, and essentially, this is now out of print. And they essentially just posted on their Twitter. They were like, this is out of print. If you want a copy, we have this many left. And I would like to read everything that Tilly Walden has written. I'm taking my time over it so as not to rush it, but I would. 
So I was like, well, this is the moment. In a secluded castle at the beginning of a winter that is predicted to last for three years, Lars is battling illness and boredom. He passes the time with his siblings and his giant cat, Nemo, as secrets are revealed and tensions within the family begin to simmer. It was her debut graphic novel. I think it sounds really intriguing. I love her art style. I love how heavy on the black it is with these, like, like washes of colour. I don't know. I just think she's fabulous. I'm really going to enjoy exploring that. Another person who I think I'm, is fabulous and I'm looking forward to exploring is Zen Jo. <laughs> I feel like I've been talking about her a lot. <laughs> um, this is Blackwater's sister. This is her latest book. I really wanted to get the hardcover because I specifically like this cover version way more than the other. Jessamine is going back to Malaysia for the first time since she was a child and she hears this voice in her head and it turns out to be her armor who has passed but who has a vendetta against someone and she's kind of like living up there <laughs> in Jessamine's head. Her Ama worshipped the local deity, the Blackwater Sister, and that's why she's able to sort of have this presence again. And, and so Ama is essentially like blackmailing Jessamine into like doing what she wants her to do. I, at this stage, will give anything Zencho writes a chance because I think she's a really interesting writer and I really enjoy um, the variety of stuff that she's written. So it was a no-brainer. I picked it up. Something that has also happened recently is that I have returned to working in my office, which means I have been reunited with my possessions that I left in the office quite a while ago, one of which is apparently this proof copy of The Shark Caller by Zilla Bethel, which again, I've heard really good things about this middle grade book. I forgot that apparently we got sent a copy at work and I was going to take it home. All I know is that Blue Wing is desperate to become a shark caller. She wants to avenge the death of her parents, but she's instead ending up having to look after this new girl. They both have secrets. Um, I'm hoping that it's like a delightful middle grade of like um, these two people really like helping them, helping each other out of whatever is happening to them. Um, I know that this has been out for a while now, <laughs> but I'm excited to read it. Another middle grade book that I heard a lot of buzz about is A Kind of Spark by Elle McNichol. This is an own voices book about a girl with autism. She is growing up in Scotland and um, she feels a real connection with the witch trials that took place. She tries to put together a memorial for these women and she comes up against some resistance from the town. And um, it's described as being a story about courage, friendship and what it means to be different. I've heard nothing but good things about this. I've also heard brilliant things about Elmer Nichols' second book. I'm hoping this is going to be another author who I can read and explore further. An author who I've read a couple of books by now is um, Jasper Ford. This is Early Riser. Um, this, I love the cover of this because you open it up and it's like a little old style postcard. This is set on a world where during winter the human population hibernates and we're following Charlie who is one of the people who is responsible for making sure that this hibernation goes smoothly and that all of the people who are asleep are okay. But there's this outbreak of viral dreams and the viral dreams escalate to the point where they're killing people. So Charlie and all of the other group of misfits who are in charge of like keeping everything okay have to investigate what is going on. I love that Jasper Ford is another author who, um, he's always got a very Jasper Ford aspect to his writing, but he does dabble across sort of different genres and different things that he's exploring. So I'm really looking forward to this one, a nice bit of sci-fi. A genre that I've not really read a lot about is westerns, but I did pick up Vengeance Road by Erin Bowman. I also have, which I mentioned previously, um, How Much of Those Hills is, How Much of These Hills is Gold by C. Pam Zhang, which is another kind of western, that's like a gold rush book. This follows Kate when her father is murdered. She disguises herself as a boy and goes off to seek vengeance. I feel like I heard a lot of buzz about this one when it came out, but I don't know how, how that worked out. I think that the cover is beautiful and I was kind of thinking of maybe having sort of like a western reading moment whereby I read this one and I read How Much of These Hills is Gold and maybe do like a, a two review video. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Sort of like a historical fiction kind of romance book is White Truffles in Winter by N.M. Kelby. I'm interested in this one because it is exploring the life of Escoffier who was an incredibly famous French chef and um, I have his cookbook. I don't know anything about him as a person. This is exploring his relationships with the actress Sarah Bernhardt, who is someone who I'm also very interested in, and a poet called um, Delphine Daffis. 
and essentially I don't read a lot of like historical romance books they're not really a genre that I usually um, am drawn to but I want to know more about Escoffier I'm interested in the other people who figure in this text and I just thought let's give it a go a book that I have already read is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid I read this on Libby I'm realizing now that I have never reviewed it I forgot but I bought a copy of it because it's a book that I wanted to lend out to people specifically I've lent it out to my mum it's now back but it's one of those that I want to lend to people. Um, I really enjoyed uh, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This was my second Taylor Jenkins read. I'm interested in reading Malibu Rising. Would love to hear your thoughts if you've read it. My final physical books, I'm just going to end on a run of non-fiction. First up is The Brief Life of Flowers by Fiona Stafford, which kind of relates to the Shakespeare book, I feel because this is kind of exploring flowers and their presence in literature and also sort of like history, like flowers that have become like motifs of things, emblematic of things, um, attached to certain like movements or historical figures. Um, again, I just think it sounds interesting. Uh, the next two are both food writing. Uh, this is Scoff by Penn Vogler which is a history of food and class in Britain. I'm fairly certain this is on my radar because of Ruby Tando, who is one of my favourite food writers, and I will kind of read any food book she recommends to me, and I think that's where this recommendation came from. I've just been really enjoying reading food books that have sort of like a, a lens to them. Um, it also has these really fabulous end papers, which I like. Um, so yes, looking forward to that one. And then my final piece of food writing is Tiny Moons, A Year of Eating in Shanghai by Nina Mia Powell's. Um, Nina Mingyao Powell's was a contributor to um, In the Kitchen, which was a food writing collection that I read very recently. Her piece was one of my favourite pieces in it, so I wanted to read more of her, and so I thought that this would be a great place to go. As per usual, I just want to end on a little run of uh, books that I picked up on my Kindle, um, starting with The Madness of Grief by the Reverend Richard Coles. I've mentioned before that I really enjoy the Reverend Richard Coles' uh, writing and just general like presence in life. This book is about his partner who passed away very recently and about the madness of grief and the process of sort of mourning that person. I think it's going to be a very emotional read, but I generally really enjoy his writing, so um, I just wanted to read it. I'm sure it's going to be really sad. I also picked up These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling, which is about a girl who gets involved with a coven of witches and um, is trying to avoid her ex-girlfriend, and then I think they do some kind of ritual and things go wrong, and then she has to very much deal with her ex-girlfriend. It also picked up Sea Fire by Natalie C. Parker, which um, is another one. There's quite a few queer books on here, obviously. <laughs> this is following a the captain of a ship. Her family were killed by this warlord, and I think she has like a vendetta against him. This vendetta is put into question when he saves the life of her friend, and she has to decide whether or not to let him be part of her ship. I really like the concept of pirates. I really love Black Sails. It's one of my favourite TV shows. And I'm kind of hoping this will deliver, like, a queer piratey read for me, which I'm super hyped about. I also picked up The Court of Miracles by um, Kester Grant, which I understand is kind of a Les Mis retelling. Sort of Les Mis re um, meets Six of Crows is how it is billed, which is extremely exciting comparisons. We follow uh, Nina, who is part of Thieves Guild, and she's watching over her adopted sister, Cassette. And I'm just excited. I like retellings, but I've never read a Les Mis retelling, so that's really interesting to me. I picked up my first Julie Kagawa, which is Shadow of the Fox. Julie Kagawa is a um, YA fantasy author that I have heard really good things about, and I'm excited to actually give her a try. This is the series that I think I have heard the most buzz about. She has a few others that I'm really interested in also, so if I like this one, there will be more to pursue. I don't really know a lot about this one, I just picked it up based on, like, hearing really good things. I also picked up The Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Dor Dorney Walton. Um, I've hauled Daisy Jones and the Six in this haul. I recently read Utopia Avenue by David Mitchell. I've been kind of enjoying these books that are, like, um, the rise and fall of a band, and um, Monty Price um, said really good things about this one, so I kind of picked it up on the strength of that recommendation. I also picked up Chosen Ones by Veronica Roth, who is an author that I have not uh, read anything of since the Divergent series, which I loved at the time and don't really remember very well now. And I'm really intrigued by the setup of this one because it follows a group of people who were brought together by the government because one of them was supposed to be the Chosen One, but it's set ten years after that, and that's such an interesting sort of like concept and setup so I'm really intrigued to see this is also written for an adult audience rather than a YA audience so that intrigues me also and then finally I picked up The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White as we are probably tired of me saying I'm reading a lot of Arthurian
and stuff, just generally at the moment. So Guinevere has come to Camelot to wed a stranger, King Arthur. The catch, Guinevere's real name and her true identity is a secret. She is a changeling, a girl who has given up everything to protect Camelot. I really enjoy reading other in retellings. I really enjoy ones that sort of focus signs on like a woman. And um, Guinevere is a figure, I'm just intrigued. I'm excited, we'll see what it's like. This has been a bit of a beast of a haul. I would love to hear if you've read any of these. I would love to hear if you have thoughts on any of them, anything like that. Please do leave a comment down below. Um, I hope you're having a really lovely day. I hope your life is full of delightful books and I will see you next time for something different.